Hey, how y'all doing? This is Mongo Slade, and this is a review of Clash of Champions 2020. As usual, we will start with the main event and work towards the opening. Uh, so, Jey Uso versus Roman Reigns was a masterclass of storytelling, character building, and it was much longer than I expected it to be, but it was long for a reason. It was great. Okay, it was part angle, part match. It w- it was so much going on, and it was fantastic. Okay, so for starters, Jay Uso is a pay per view main event act in the year of our Lord twenty twenty. What a wonderful world! What a world! Who would ever thought that a guy who was on kickoff shows. It is now the main event of a pay-per-view. And, you know, Clash of Champions is kind of a big event. And they played this match like it was a huge match. You know, it was it was huge. You know, they, ta- they told the story before the bell rang to when the bell actually rang until after the bell rang. There was so much story that really you could spend 20 to 30 minutes talking about just this match. If you really wanted to, you really could spend 30 minutes talk- just talking about this match. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that, obviously. Even though this match was pretty much the only match on the show that I really thought was like phenomenal. But it told a simple story of Jay Uso being a natural underdog. And and it, the, the, the through the commentary, it wasn't just a story of, well, you know Jay Uso is a tag team wrestler, so you take him as an underdog from that perspective. The commentary told the story that Jay is the youngest. You know, he's eight minutes younger than Jimmy. You know, he's younger than Roman. And both Jimmy and Jay are younger than Roman. You know, so you get this natural underdog. And it ties into what I was saying before about him being like an annoying little brother. And it was like, it's you start telling this story. Building this story around Roman being the big dog, being a bully. He's bullying his cousins. He's admitting that he bullied his cousins his whole life. And then you get this almost bipolar Roman, you know, where he's one minute he's beating he's beating Jay's ass and he's feeling bad about it. And he's like, no, 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 I love him. I'm not going to keep running his head into the announce table. I love this guy. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pin him. But Jay keeps kicking out. Jay keeps fighting back. And that's the problem. That is what sends Roman over the edge is that Jay actually thinks he can win. So, you know, you have this the story like unfolding right in front of you where Jay is supposed to have been, you know, everybody thought it was going to be like a, I even said it might be like a, a squash match, you know, four or five minutes tops. They did probably about 15, maybe 20. Uh, but they told the story that Roman kind of wanted to end the match, you know, and then when he had the match won, he was kind of pissed that it over how it got to that point. But um, that was, like, like how they got there was like phenomenal because Roman was dominant early. They told the physical story. The physical story was Roman being standing up to Jay Uso. They did the lockup. Go, go back all the way back to the lockup. Roman pushes Jay into the corner and then Roman st- just stands over him. And Jay has like the look on his face where there is intimidation in his face. Like, Yes, this is kind of how it always has been. And Jay kind of slips past Roman. Like, Roman doesn't move so Jay can can get out of the corner. He slips past Roman. <laughs> you know, <laughs> where Roman's head, like, follows him. Like, okay, that's where it's going to be. But then here's the crazy thing. This is the great part. Is that even though Roman is the bully, he's intimidating. You can say he's been doing this his whole life. He was still cheating. He was still cheating in this match. Choking him with the ropes and not wanting to break on five. He was arguing with the ref. Well, he was trying not to argue with the ref. I, I, I found, even found that to be very entertaining. Roman didn't want to even talk to Charles Robinson. He didn't want to deal with him. He he expected to Charles Robinson to let him do whatever he wanted to do. You know, like that was crazy. He's kind of like I'm Roman Reigns. You don't don't he and he said to the ref a little bit later, like don't ever make me address you again. He just talked to him very calmly. He didn't scream at him. <laughs> yell at him he just don't don't make me have to address you again he told Paul Heyman to tell the ref to stop talking to him he he know what he's doing 
it was great. There were so many different spot, spots of the story where, you know, and I, I would say I said before that sometimes you see in like New Japan where they do these back and forths, and it seemed like it would go on forever. This match did a back and forth that seemed to make perfect sense. They were outside the ring. Roman threw a punch. Jay stumbled. Jay threw a punch. Okay, Roman sold it. Jay Roman threw a punch. Jay took a bump. Okay, he he went down because that's the story that we're telling here. Rome is bigger than Jay. He's stronger than Jay. He's older than Jay. He's more experienced than Jay. And it wouldn't stand any reason. It wouldn't make any sense for Jay to be able to stand up to him. So that was flawless. It was the only, the only thing I, the only problem I had is the match was a little too long. But other than that, this was perfect. It was the perfect storytelling for what you're trying to do. If you're looking for a complete wrestling match, no, this is probably wasn't that. It had spurts of uh, of of uh, these guys going at it back and forth, but it was mostly just Roman kicking Jay Russo's ass, which is exactly what Roman said he was going to be. You know, Jay was easily Jay was overwhelmed. You know, he had never been in this position before. He's fighting from underneath. You know, so you're telling the story of this guy being an underdog. You've been telling that story since the beginning. You told that story perfectly here, but you show that he has fire, that he's never going to give up, that he's never willing to give up. And then they went even further with that with that thread, because once now I have to tell the whole story. So Jay starts to fire up. He hits. He you know Roman's going for the spear. Jay reverses the spear. You know super kicks Roman. Roman is down. He goes for the big USO splash. Boom. One, two, Roman kicks out. But when Roman kicks out, he uppercuts Jay Uso in the balls. And Jay never recovers. That was the last offensive move Jay Uso got for what it seems like five or six minutes. Because once he hit him in the balls, it was over. Okay? Now Roman is just mauling him. And then he spears him. And then he got him, he got him pinned. And now it like it's like the light clicks. Like, oh, really? And then you can see Roman, he just says, you brought me all the way out here for this. You brought me all the way out here for this. He's like, I'm not going to pin him. And then he starts trying to embarrass him. Now he's really going too far. He's trying to humiliate Jay. He wants Jay to look into the camera and acknowledge him as the tribal chief. Call me chief. And Jay is like, no. <laughs> he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. No. And, and when he says no, Roman kicks his ass. And then he's, he goes back into it. He, he grabs Jay by the face, looks him in the camera. You know, acknowledge me. You call me chief. And then Paul Heyman wants the match to end. So Heyman is like, you're the chief. You're the tribal chief. And Roman's like, no. He needs to acknowledge me as the chief. He needs to acknowledge me as the chief. But Jay won't do it. Jay won't. Jay will not give up. He still has that. He still kind of he still feels like he has a chance, but he he cannot fight back. He's been getting the shit kicked out of him. The like I gotta say the only thing is it went on a little too long, but they did what was supposed to happen when somebody is getting mauled. Jimmy Uso comes down. He hobbles to the ring because Jimmy is still injured. He's carrying a towel. He tells Jay, "I'm gonna throw this in, Us." And Jay's like, "No, nah, no, nah, don't throw it in. It's not. It's like." Don't throw it in. Don't don't throw it in. Now this was a little, this was a little uh, dramatic, because they went back and forth for a long time, and Roman then just decides he's gonna pick on Jimmy. He's like, "You call me chief, and I'll end it." And Jimmy just looked at him like, "What? Well, no, I'm not doing that." And he's like, "I'll just throw this in. I'll throw it in." And Jay's like, "No, nah, no." Nah. And they're holding hands, and kind of having a little too long of a conversation. And then Roman snatches Jay away from Jimmy, pulls him into the ring, starts beating on him, pounding on him. Then Jimmy throws in the towel. Once he throws in the towel, the match is officially over. And then but Roman doesn't really want to stop. He's like, boom, boom, boom. I, I, like we we in we in it, we in the midst of it now. You know, it's over now. We about to just go ahead and beat this man up. And then Jimmy crawls into the ring and covers Jay. And then Jimmy tells Roman, you the chief, man. Just leave him alone. You the chief. Like, whatever. Like, it doesn't mean that much to me. You the chief. Leave my brother alone. And then Roman, I wish I could remember what the hell that thing is called that uh, Jay Uso came out wearing. 
but it's like you know the flowers that they wear around their necks you know Samoans Hawaiians I forget what it's called but Jay Uso was wearing that when the match started you know he wore it to the ring and you know Roman took it from him you know after Roman beat him Paul Heyman put Jay Uso's flowers around his neck you know Roman is the chief and he wins and the match was masterful it was a masterful Broadway play that wasn't a great wrestling match probably not most people who want to see you know some uh, grappling Kurt Angle type stuff nah this, this wasn't that at all this was a play this is pretty much what it was it told a story again before the bell rang and then after the bell rang it was a great I don't I don't even know what you call it you call it Broadway you know it was like it was a great play, a great, uh, I, freak, I don't know what you would call it, but it was fantastic. You know, it, it was immersive because the story was natural. It made sense. It didn't go overboard. Jay got offense. Jay looked good. He had some fight. He had some fire. Roman had to cheat. And he had to be a bully in order to win. So it wasn't just big dog Roman Reigns went in there and ate. Uh, Jay Uso he had to cheat you know he choked him on, uh, with the ropes two or three times he took some cheap shots and then he ultimately hit him in the balls in order to get the uh, the, the upper hand in order to fin it, the end of the match and then he tried to humiliate him it was masterful man I will definitely be watching this again and if you don't watch anything else on this show you should definitely watch Jay Uso versus Roman Reigns it was fun, you know. It was fun. Now I don't know how many times you can do this match. You probably, I mean, you could probably do this match one more time. You'd probably do it again at Hell in a Cell. Um, but I don't think that you can have exactly the same kind of match because Roman said a lot. Like, I didn't go through in detail all the little things Roman said in this match. You know that that were kind of they made me laugh, but they it it made sense. You know, like when he told Jay, you know, you trying to level up. I live at this level. Like you trying to get where I am. I live at this level. And then Jay chopped him coming out of that corner. And Roman didn't even sell it. It didn't mean nothing to him. <laughs> you know, he, he get, getting chopped didn't mean anything. It was like that. that's that visual storytelling that I'm at a different level. Like if you was playing like a video game or something. And you see like. A, a, a enemy on a higher level than you like your best shit doesn't matter even though it wasn't really his best stuff but jay did his jay did his best jay did very very well i was i was i thoroughly enjoyed the performance the the broadway the play that they put in front of us and i enjoyed it it was great it was fantastic it was cinematic in its own way let's put it like that it was cinematic in its own way and you could actually, I may actually just do a video breaking down just this match. Because you probably could. And it's fantastic. So, let's let's continue. Uh, what was not fantastic, uh, Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. The ambulance match for the WWE title. Alright, so what I did not like about this match was all the interference. Uh, so, Drew McIntyre won. He defended the title successfully. Which, uh, I was wrong that Orton was going to win. But then you had Big Show choke slam Randy Orton through a table. You had Christian attack Randy Orton ba in backstage when they was kind of in catering. Then you had Shawn Michaels attack Randy Orton, super kicked him and tossing him off the top of an ambulance. And through all of that, Randy Orton still almost won the match. So you really just kind of shit on Drew McIntyre. You know, like after all of like <laughs> it took three people, four people in order to beat Randy Orton on this night. I'm not a fan of that, you know, and it's for obvious reasons. Baby faces shouldn't need that much help. You know, look, I get that. I get the poetic story. They was trying to tell with Randy Orton uh, and his sins coming back to haunt him. They, Cause they kept yelling it. I, I get that. You know, that does that make sense? Sure. But, at the same time, you need to let Drew McIntyre just win the match on his own. You're like, 
and like the interferences kept coming in when Drew McIntyre was in danger. So it was kind of like you playing a, like you playing uh, Dragon Ball Z fighters or something, or you know uh, Marvel versus Capcom, where you know you get knocked down and your your partner come in and boom 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 and then jump out the way. You know it's like, no, we we that's not how a big, um, powerful champion like Drew McIntyre should defend his title. Now, um, I also didn't really like I said it before, not really a fan of the whole ambulance match. You know, not really thrilled about that. Uh, it, it was okay. They used the ambulance, which was decent. You know, uh, Drew McIntyre kicked the door of the ambulance off, <laughs> and then he sold it like he might have jammed his knee. Uh, Randy Orton sma- slammed uh, Drew McIntyre in the back of the head against the windshield, which actually cut up Drew McIntyre's back, which was a good visual. You know, he got some blood, so it was decent visual. But otherwise, I, I really didn't. I didn't feel it in this match. It, it just felt like it was too much going on. It was overbooked. I like that Flair was driving the ambulance to drive Orton away. I like that. Um, but I think that if if all three of those guys had maybe attacked Randy Orton at the same time, it might have been better. Like if Drew McIntyre was fighting from underneath, but Randy was cheating, even though it's hard to cheat in a no dis- disqualification match. But let's say he was taking... Uh, liberties. He had done something like kicked uh, Drew McIntyre in the head. And then, you know, uh, then when he opened the ambulance, Christian and Shawn Michaels jumped out and beat the shit out of him. Super kicked him and, you know, maybe threw his face up against the ambulance or something like that. And then that's kind of how we left it. But when you had multiple interferences, it did, well, like after the big show, I was like, what the fuck is the big show doing here? And then when I saw Christian, I'm like, oh, okay. So everybody that he kicked in the head is going to come out here now. And I half expected Keith Lee to come out there. You know, because I'm like, why not Keith Lee? Now, I didn't know what they were going to do when it came to Ric Flair because I figured they weren't going to have Ric Flair come out there and chop him. But uh, but so it was a nice cherry that Ric Flair um, drove the ambulance. But this was sort of a way of, I guess, ending the Orton run that began after WrestleMania. Well, after uh, he, his last match with Edge. Of you know Orton just being the most sinister, diabolical person on the on the roster, so maybe Orton is going away for a while. Uh, that would be fine, you know. Orton kind of he's he's done his business, you know, so he kind of can go away and take a break. You know, he's done a lot. Let somebody else take the top spot at the top heel, and uh, that would be fine. If that's if this is what they were trying to do, because it seemed like that's what they were going with this, is that they were trying to write. Randy Orton off of TV. Um, if he shows up on Raw, I'll be disappointed. But if this was a way to write Randy Orton off, it was fine. As a match, I really didn't like it. It was it was too much. It was overbooked. Um, so I wasn't a fan of that. Uh, see Bailey versus Oscar because Nikki Cross got the Rona and Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax got the Rona, so the matches got canceled. So Bailey had an open challenge, which Oscar uh, accepted. Uh, I actually was okay with Oscar accepting the open challenge because their story, the story is Nikki Cross was was going to finally prove she can beat Bailey without Sasha Banks in her corner. So it was basically the same story that Oscar had had a problem beating uh, Bailey because Sasha Banks kept interfering. But now Sasha Banks is not going to be there. Oscar's going to get a, a straight up one on one match. And then Bailey hit Oscar with a chair and got disqualified. So they really could have just kept this match off the card. <laughs> I mean, really, you could have just kept this match off the card. But uh, it was fine. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. But it was just a means to get to the, the Sasha Banks hitting Bailey with a chair. I mean, the Sasha Banks Bailey brawl. It's pretty much what it, it boiled up to. Because that's really the whole point of even having this whole thing. Is Sasha Banks needed to get some revenge on Bailey. So, okay. We, we got there. You know, we used Asuka to get there, but we got there. I mean, it, yeah, if Asuka would have won, I probably would have said, oh, shit, you could have put Bianca Belair in that spot. You could have put, you know, uh, Alexa Bliss in that spot. You could have put Peyton Royce in that spot. You could have put anybody in that spot. Because it was an open challenge for anybody on any brand. You could have pull somebody from NXT like Rhea Ripley or something like that and put them in that spot. But 
because it was just going to be a disqualification, it didn't matter who it was. It could, you know, it didn't matter. You didn't want to put Bianca Belair in there and snatch the title from her and, and something like that. So Oscar was a perfect opponent for that because she didn't need to, she didn't need two belts anyway. So the the uh, disqualification, and then you know Sasha Banks comes in with a chair, and Sasha Banks is still you know, she they were she attacked Bailey. Now she was doing the waylay, you know, with a you know, boom, 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 boom on top of Bailey, and Bailey was standing up as <laughs> Sasha Banks was waylaying her. So that's a little you should you should be going the opposite way. Like if somebody is like repeatedly punching you, you should be going down, not coming up. <laughs> you know, I I know Sasha is skinny, but come on, sell for you know you know run away, crawl away, you know, just do something else. Um, Sasha, they did a good job of Sasha still selling the neck, uh, you know, so it's proving that she's not 100%. She's not ready. She's ready to fight where she still has the fighting spirit, but she doesn't have the, she's not ready to, to really throw down yet. And she hit her with a kendo stick, you know, with some brawling back and forth. And then Bailey bailed and begged off. And then the invisible wall stopped Sasha Banks from going any further, but they did a good job of, instead of just you know, Sasha Banks being at the ropes, yelling at Bailey and pointing and owning the ring. She sold her neck like, OK, I'm going to let you get away this time because my neck hurts. So I, that 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 was fine. Um, I don't know what they do. I guess they're going to keep the title on Bailey until Sasha Banks can wrestle. Because it seems like this might have been a good time to have Bailey drop the belt. But whatever, it, it doesn't matter. Bailey is still the champion. She's been the champion. 349 days pretty cool you know because especially since people say WWE doesn't do long title reigns but they actually emphasized how long Bailey has been champion and the Street Profits who was the next match and this match was good until the finish these referees I just like the Oscar Mickey James match where the referee stopped the match inexplicably I do not understand why the referee counted three when Andrade's shoulder was up. This match was fine. There was no S curl for Montez Ford, so I was disappointed. The Street Profits was uh, have been tag team champions for 209 days. I wrote that down. They're the longest reigning Raw tag team champions ever, which is dope. Uh, I think Angel Garza might have been injured because there were doctors out there. He was laying on the floor. Uh, and maybe that's why they screwed Andrade because Angel Garza couldn't continue. Uh, if that's the case, you haven't, you should have a different outcome because it was clear that Andrade's shoulder was not down. You got to do something. You got to do better than that. You have to be like referees, the referee stoppage because Andrade, I mean, because Andrew Garza is hurt or God doesn't like he could continue. So referee stoppage, instead of having a three count when a guy's shoulder was clearly up, like they got to do better. You got to do better. This match could have been fine, but these dog shit referees, they need, I don't know, I don't know what you would call it, but they, they definitely need, uh, work on how to end these matches without guys, uh, looking like shit. Cause they look like shit. Uh, and especially since dog has got a pin with like a sky high. I mean, come on, bro. Come on. And then it looked like maybe Garza and Andrade was supposed to win the match. You could have just let them, uh, you know, um, win in a different way, called a, a uh, unscheduled finish. You could have t- just told the guys to end the match some other way, and then they could have came up with a finish on their own. You know, but th- that's, that was just stupid. It makes the refs look like they're completely inept. Like, it really makes the refs look inept when they do three counts and the guy's shoulder is up, or they call the match off and the performer can still perform. It's like, come on. I get that we're trying to be uh, protective, but you're overprotective. You're ending the matches too early. You know, let the shit play out. Okay, so that was match four. Match three, Apollo Crews versus Lashley for the United States title. Uh, Lashley won this match. Good match. Um, I wrote down that Apollo Crews is probably the most solid worker in the company. And what I mean by solid I mean, like, he's rock solid. I mean, he he, he can talk. He, he actually found his voice. He can talk. 
He can wrestle. He could. He can do flippy shit. I don't like the flippy stuff from Apollo Crews, if we're being honest. Or like the standing moonsault and the standing shooting star press. I don't really like that stuff. I think he should stop doing it. I think he would look more of a badass if he stopped doing it. He bench pressed Lashley in this match. I don't know if I've ever seen him do that before. I think he might have. But he bench pressed Lashley in this match, so he showed his strength. But what I mean by him being solid is that he can do a little of everything. You know, like he's very, very solid. He can talk a little bit. He can, you know, mat work a little bit, do a little bit of hot flying. He got some strength. You know, he'd be a great all-around player, great, you know, four or five tool player. Is he, a, is he a starting player? Probably not. But he's like a great six man. You know, like if he was playing basketball, he'd be like a great six man, a great um, great uh, backup running back. He's, he'd be great in that role. Um, but last year he won this match, which was the, absolutely the right call. I do like the story, the storyline in the match of MVP talking to Apollo Crews while he while Lashley was beating him up. Like, you know, Apollo Crews is like dangling over the ropes and MVP is like telling him he's counseling him, quote unquote. You know, he's kind of just telling Apollo Crews like, yo, this is how you feel. Like, this is our business. This is what we do. How you feel? How you how does it make you feel? You know, and I think that I think Apollo Crews is going to end up turning. And I think Ricochet is going to end up having probably to bring in Mustafa Ali. And it's probably going to be Ricochet and Lashley next. Um, because there's really nowhere else for Apollo Crews to go. So I do think that eventually the, uh, the, the, the Hurt Business is going to absorb Apollo Crews. And I think this match sort of tells that story. That Apollo Crews is the next to turn. Because they've been talking a lot about you know money and family. Because Cedric Alexander, the reason he turned... He's talking about his money, your know, money being low. He needs, you know, he needed for his family. And Paulo Cruz was like, I need that title for my family. It's cool to show my kids. I like, look what I look what daddy's got. And, you know, something like that. And I think that might be the the story because all these men are parents, you know, all of them. And you know, well, I, I don't know if Lashley's a parent. I don't know if um, Sheldon Benjamin is a parent. But, you know, Apollo Cruz is, Ricochet is, and Mustafa Ali, Ali is, and so is Cedric Alexander. So if you can get, but I think Apollo Cruz is going to be the next to turn. That's my prognostication, is that Apollo Cruz is going to be the next to turn. So Zelina Vega versus Asuka was actually decent. They actually gave Zelina a lot of the match. She got to show off. She worked Asuka's shoulder. She got to show off some kind of slick moves. You know, she's being a little sneaky. Uh, she lost. Obviously, everybody knew Zelina Vega wasn't going to win, but uh, it was fine. You know, Zelina did did a pretty good job. She showed that she can be a decent to good worker. She showed that she can be a good opponent for Asuka. She obviously talked better than Asuka because Asuka's English is not that good. But, you know, I, I enjoyed the match. I enjoyed the counters. They countered each other a lot. I enjoyed that, you know, Zelina Vega showed some submissions. She also showed some very sneaky roll-ups. She kept trying to steal a win. Like, she wasn't trying to overpower Asuka or anything like that. She tried a very basic match. You work a, you work a, um, work a limb, but she worked Asuka's shoulder. You use some submission holes. You counter, counter a lot. She used a lot of counters, a lot of roll-ups and stuff like that. And the finish came with Asuka actually reversed one of these roll-ups into the Asuka lot. And Zelina Vega very quickly tapped out. But she proved herself. She proved herself very well. And then they, sh- they, sh- they told us that the story wasn't over because once uh, the match was over, Oscar did a short promo where she says that, you know, Zelina Vega is a firecracker, you know, small but dangerous. And then she offered to shake Zelina Vega's hand. Zelina Vega, instead of shaking, she bowed, you know, respectfully to Oscar. Oscar bowed in return and Zelina Vega kicked her in the face <laughs> and then threw her down. And then Oscar got up ranting in Japanese. And I was like, okay, they're not done. All right. So, like I said, they might get two or three of them out of there. And I think Zelina probably will end up with the title. So, it was fine. You know, Zelina did a, had a good accounting of herself. And then the, the ladder match. Oh, my God. All right. I have to admit, I'm a fan of Sami Zayn now. I, I know because I hate Sami Zayn's politics, but the the psychology that he pulled in this match the spots in this match were fan fucking tastic this match was awesome and i'm really kind of burnt out on ladder matches i'm kind of burnt out on i, I hate triple threat matches as a general rule but this match was awesome now it was a little longer than i thought it would be 
You know, it was a little longer than I thought it should be. Um, but it was great. It was great. Like, you know, there was, of course, the obligatory huge spot from Jeff Hardy where he jumped off the ladder from the top of the ladder on top of Sami Zayn, who was laying on top of another ladder. It didn't factor into the finish at all. Uh, people chanted, this is wrestling. I'm not so sure if that was legit or if that was piped in. It was probably piped in. Um, you had a very aggressive AJ Styles all night, which was really good. I love when, uh, when AJ Styles like in his bag. So then the story really picked up when Sami Zayn went over to his jacket, you know, his, you know, his green jacket and he pulled out two pairs of handcuffs and things got real because he handcuffed Jeff Hardy's arm, his hand. No, he, he, he handcuffed the ladder to Jeff Hardy's earlobe because, you know, Jeff Hardy has those gauges in his ear. So <laughs> Sami Zayn slipped the goddamn handcuff through the ear locked it and then slipped his uh hand <laughs> through the ladder and locked it that was fucking great that is some of the most original shit i've ever seen i love that and then you got jeff hardy walking around with this ladder attached to his head for the rest of the match <laughs> that was great that was fantastic shit and what made it even better is aj styles who was kicking kicking ass all night somehow some way Sami Zayn handcuffed a, himself to AJ Styles. So AJ Styles is beating his ass and trying to climb up the ladder and Sami is sandbagging. So AJ can't go up because he's handcuffed to Sami and Sami is sandbagging. This gives, of course, gives um, Hardy a, a chance to recover. And he has to struggle getting in the ring with the ladder <laughs> handcuffed to his head. <laughs> so... After that, so Sami Zayn is sandbagging on uh, uh, AJ Styles. Halfway, they get halfway up the ladder. Then Sami kind of climbs halfway up. Then Sami pulls the key out of his pocket, unlocks his handcuff, while AJ Styles is you know scuffling with Jeff Hardy. He then handcuffs AJ to the ladder, climbs on the other side, and gets the belt. I was like, yes. Thumbs up. I love that shit. All of that is fucking dope. And it, Sami Zayn is the Intercontinental Champion. All of that is dope. I loved it. That was great. It was a, is, is it overbooked? Yes. But it's great. I, I loved it. It was great. I don't know what you do with AJ Styles now. Because he's kind of lost his rematch. And he's lost this match. I don't know where he goes next. Um, obviously, probably Jeff and Sami continue. But this was great. This was great shit. I am now a fan of Sami Zayn. He is excellent. And on the kickoff match was Nakamura and Cesaro versus Lucha House Party, which uh, consisted of Kalisto and uh, Lince Dorado. It was a pre- it was a pretty good match. You know, uh, Nakamura and Cesaro were very aggressive, but obviously, you know, they are the tag team champions and for a good reason. So. Uh, Throughout the night, they, 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 because it's the Clash of Champions and every title was on the line, they did have uh, a 24-7 championship title run um, for Drew Gulak, who beat or who pinned our truth. I don't even remember how he did it. I just remember writing down, like, I feel bad for whoever has to do the wiki for the, <laughs> the 24-7 title because you usually have to change it two or three times. And remember where it happened. and when, Well, I guess it all happens. You know, hell, how do you know where it happens? Like, how do you know that uh, where our truth was when he got pinned, you know, in, in random places? And also, I for, completely forgot, never crossed my mind to even think that Akira Tozawa got ate by a shark. Which is absolutely ridiculous. And I didn't think of it until Drew Gulak said it. But I'm like, that's absolutely insane. Like, <laughs> why would you have a man get eaten by a shark? But that that stuff is out of my league. I can't. I can't. I don't even keep up with twenty four seven title anymore. Um, like I said, uh, Nikki Cross, Nia Jax, and Shayna all got the Rona, uh, so they were out. But it was a solid show. It was a three match show. Uh, so the ladder match was fantastic. Roman and Jay Uso was fantastic. Um, you might like the ambulance match. You know, maybe. Um. If, if that's your thing, um, Zelina and Oscar was pretty good. 
most of the matches were solid. You know, the two matches that we've seen already, we already knew they were going to be good. Andrade and, and Garza versus Street Profits and Lashley and Cruz. Those matches have been done to death. So that was the only really the, like the downslide was those matches have been done so much. And Oscar and Bailey also have been done a lot. But it was mostly just a means to an end. Like it was just somebody has to be in the ring so that Sasha Banks can attack Bailey. Um, and without without it seeming like Sasha is taking up the open challenge. So that was fine. And Zelina Vega and Oscar was okay. So it was a it's a solid seven point five, maybe a solid seven. Let's go seven. Um, the Uso and Roman was great though. Like if that, if that match wasn't on here, it'll probably be like a six, six and a half. But that's only because most of these matches have, we've seen before. Actually, because of the ladder match, I could take it up to an eight, but the ladder match was the opener. The opener and the closer were fantastic. Everything else in the middle was a little soft. So let's, let's put it like that. It was a two match show instead of, instead of saying it's a three match show, it's a two match show. A lot of, a lot of angles and stuff happened. A lot of talking, a lot of storytelling going on. I enjoyed that. So, uh, I don't really have nothing negative to say other than hopefully we get new feuds for all of these titles. Um, except maybe Uso and Roman. I kind of I kind of want them to continue. <laughs> but we need a new opponent for McIntyre. Definitely need a new opponent for Lashley. Definitely need new opponents for the Street Profits. And maybe the Hurt Business will take on the Street Profits now. And that'll be fun. So, you know, maybe Oscar and Selena Vega was, will continue. But um, I'm down for it, man. But let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. Like this video, share, and subscribe. Um, if you want to support the channel, send me one dollar via Cash App, which is cool. <laughs> you know, I only I only ask for like one dollar. Um, or if you don't, just continue listening for free. I'm not gonna stop making videos, but <laughs> you know, I can't miss what you never had, but can't get if you don't ask. So, uh, if you want to support the show, hit the Cash App. Just you, I don't don't you don't have to send me like a, a crazy amount of money, a dollar or two. It'll be fine for me. But um, otherwise, you know, let me know what you guys think, and um, I'll talk to you guys later.